right, tally ho there champs. Now, my Mac will be in very soon, actually tomorrow, but this is a bit of an appetizer. We have some benchmarks of the M1 Mac processor. I'll get to them later. Very interesting. You got to see these benchmarks. Of course, make sure you subscribe because I do have those M1 Macs coming in tomorrow. And if you have any tests in mind that you want me to do, let me know down there in the comments. But I'm also going to talk about why you can't beat the MacBook Air for $999. Now, I want to make this clear. I'm not saying the MacBook Air is the best laptop you can get. That's not what I'm saying here. But I'm saying at the price point of $999. It cannot be beaten. Now I spent quite a substantial amount of time yesterday looking through all the premium laptops from all the manufacturers. If we're talking premium laptops here, now let me define premium. The MacBook Air I didn't consider premium before because it didn't have a premium processor and it didn't have a premium display. So premium to me just means premium design, premium materials, aluminium, magnesium, carbon fiber, whatever. It's not plastic, right? It's expensive, it's premium, has a premium processor, or at least the option of a premium processor, and it has a premium display. Or again, at least the option of a premium display. Now the MacBook Pro ticked all those boxes, XPS 13, you know, some Spectres, X1 Carbon. But the MacBook Air, as I said before, just fell short with the display and the processor. Now, I can't say that. It has a premium processor. You'll see the benchmarks later. Whew, wow. And it has a premium wide color gamut display. So it has a P3 display. It's like the only difference between this and the MacBook Pro 13 is 100 nits of brightness. Now I checked all the manufacturers and I thought, what do you get for $999? Now usually if you're getting a premium laptop, it starts at $999. And what you get for $999 may shock you. Usually it's an i3. Usually it's like some with four gigs of RAM, no jokes, four gigs of RAM, 128 SSD. Generally now, for $1,000, you'll get an i3, 256, and eight gigs RAM. And most importantly, the entry level display. So it's usually like a full HD display. It's nowhere near the quality of the premium display option. Now this was the case with Apple too. That's why the MacBook Pro is so expensive because they have to pay for the premium parts. They have to pay for the premium Intel part. That's the biggest cost here. And now that Apple don't have to pay for that part, they can give you a better display standard because have a look at this. This is the price of an i7, okay? Now the Apple Silicon, as you'll see later in the benchmarks, it's going to be very close to that performance, right? And depending if you're using hardware encoding or not or whatever, better in some circumstances, not as fast in other circumstances. But I would say it's the equal of this processor. And this processor cost the manufacturer to buy over $400. Yes, $400. That's per 1,000 units. Maybe they buy 10,000. Maybe they buy 50,000. They're still not going to get a mega discount on that. It's still going to cost around $400 just for that i7 CPU. How is a laptop manufacturer building a premium laptop going to make a laptop that costs $999 when the CPU alone cost $400. Then you've got to add SSD. Then you've got to add RAM. Then you've got to add premium display, premium materials for the design, etc. The motherboard, ports, chips, overheads. You're not fitting that in $999. Now, Apple cannot be beaten with this MacBook Air because they don't have to pay that $400. It would be costing them peanuts compared to $400 for the M1 silicon. All that cost would be bundled into one cost for Apple for iPad, iPhone, and now the Macs. It'll be costing like a real fraction of the price just for that CPU. So now Apple can give you something that is unmatched, unbeatable at $999. All premium. You get your premium CPU, premium display. And if you want this sort of spec in a premium laptop, Windows laptop, you have to pay $1,700, $1,800 for the i7. Yes, at least $1,700. So as I say, I'm not saying the MacBook Air is the best, but I'm saying that $999 it can't be beaten because you don't need to upgrade that $999 Mac. Maybe if you want more storage, but 8 gigabytes of RAM, considering that it's running Mac OS, which is basically based on iOS with some extra frameworks and the Mac OS interface, 8 gigabytes of RAM is going to be more than enough on a MacBook Air. Now, if you're a pro, yes, you're going to need more than 8 gigs of RAM, and you're probably not buying a MacBook Air anyway. Now, this is outside of all the compatibility issues you're going to have with Big Sur, with Apple Silicon, and stuff like that. But if you're just using a general computer for web surfing, email, even word and stuff like that productivity it can't be beaten at 999 and you don't have to upgrade it unless you really want more storage so that's that so let's have a look at these benchmarks then there they are 
Yes, Apple Silicon on the left, XPS in the middle, and the 4800U in the Lenovo Slim 7. They've updated this Cinebench for Apple Silicon, so I'm assuming here it's native. I will have to test this tomorrow myself, but given that they're making such a big deal about it, I assume it's native. But if we have a look at this benchmark, yes, it's the slowest out of the three. Now the M1 is 10 watts, the other two are 15 watts. But there is a big difference, right? The AMD and the Intel chip can boost like 40, 50 watts, right? The M1 will only boost to what looks like 15 to 18 sort of watts. Well, it looks like that in a chart. I don't know what to believe from Apple, but it looks like it doesn't go over 20 watts. These ones can go over 50 watts. But if we look at the TDP, like 10 watts versus 15 watts versus 15 watts, the performance per watt is out of this world, right? Well, at least compared to the quad-core Intel system, not compared to the AMD. If you think the Apple Silicon can beat the MacBook Pro 16, well, actually, that 15-watt AMD 4800U can beat the MacBook Pro 16 in compute. You can see there, that is going to be well short of a MacBook Pro 16 at Apple Silicon. You've probably seen these articles where they're saying it's faster than the MacBook Pro 16. I'm talking about the M1 processor. That was Geekbench. You can't use Geekbench because it's not very accurate. Just don't use it, trust me. But looking at this benchmark here, and this is a raw CPU test, it's at least a match for the Intel 11th Gen i7 while using much less power. So stay tuned, make sure you subscribe tomorrow. You'll see my tests on this. I'm gonna test it compared to these systems here, but it's a lot closer than Apple would make you think, right? Yes, Apple Silicon, if you're using Apple stuff and you're doing some hardware and coding, but then if I use AVX on the Intel system, that's gonna kill it. And if I use compute like eight cores or raw power on the AMD system, that's gonna kill it. I tried to explain that. People don't understand the difference between hardware and coding and normal just raw CPU power, just your software encoding because pros will not use hardware encoding because they want to render frame by frame. They don't want to use shortcuts where, oh, this frame is close to that frame, so we'll only render this part and this pixel's close to that one. We'll just merge those pixels. And I mean, hardware encoders are close to full quality now. I mean, there's not much difference between the software and hardware encoding these days, but if you want the number one quality, you're not using the hardware encoder. But anyway, it's going to be very interesting. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.